Hey guys, um, I just wanted to do this face to face video here clip at the beginning of this video tutorial on how I paint my Black Legion. Um, <laughs> let me just move this great big cup full of brushes out of the way. Of how I paint my Black Legion uh, Chaos Space Marines. Now, I did paint these guys live on Twitch. Now, normally I have a close up camera off the side so I can show you, but yeah, here they are. Um, the reason why I am currently doing the tutorial this way, I want to do the little personal one-on-one -on -one touch first, is because this video series is going to be known as minimalist. And what that means, it's the minimum amount of paints for the maximum amount of effort and energy and impact. And what I mean by that is, instead of having a desk full of paints that you're never going to use on this model and they're just there as like a prop just taking up space they're going to go back into my paint box um, and vice versa it also means that when I come to doing the overhead and whatnot because again I've got a multiple camera setup I've got a camera literally right here I've got a close-up camera over here and I've got this forward camera here the reason why I do that is so that when I do my tutorials after I've done something and I want to point it out I can just put it straight under the closed cam and you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about things of that nature um, it's like yeah that's that's it's it's a new way of how I'm gonna be taking painting miniatures and doing my miniature painting t tutorial videos forward um, I also want to say a big thank you to all of my followers over on twitch to my subscribers over on twitch you guys are amazing um, I'm getting a lot of support over there. Uh, I'm getting back into streaming. Um, due to some medical reasons, I can no longer work real life. Um, and, you know, you know, playing the world's smallest fiddle, it's fine. Point being, guys, is that I've got such an awesome follower and fan base that you guys are supporting me in every which way that you can, and it means the world to me. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to... Stop rambling here and let you see the rest of the painting tutorial. So, enjoy guys. Hey guys, um, we changed cam camera angle up. Now we're doing a uh, overhead camera angle because I want to explain to you um, one of the things I, I do in order to keep my brushes uh, 100%. And if you're using a synthetic brush, sorry, knock everything over like a silly billy literally knock everything over like a silly billy and I'm going to leave this blooper in because I feel like a complete tool um, and there's a lot of brushes everywhere uh, and I can't move my chair because if I do I'm going to crush some of them Rule of thumb, make sure that all your brushes aren't in one huge pot right by the microphone that you're going to be moving. Otherwise, you're going to have a huge blooper. <laughs> um, Alright, so I'm just going to pick these up. That way I've got some room to move. <clears throat> Where was I? Ah, oh, yeah. Brushes. Um... As you can tell from the overhead, um, I do a brush maintenance on my brushes. Now, if you're using synthetic brushes, uh, chances are the, the average painter is using a synthetic brush. You're going to get what's called hook tip. Now, I'm going to go straight to the close-up camera here. And you're going to see a prime example of hook tip. Um, if you can see, the brush itself has the tip of the brush is actually leaning to the left that's called a hook tip um, and the way you can prevent those here's a, another close-up one of a hook tip um, the way see you can see right there the tips there you go prime example right there it's, it's a hook tip the way you can prevent hooked tips um, is by uh, using specific cleaners 
Um, now, if you're using a natural hairbrush, you can use Da Vinci soap brush. Um, you can use uh, hand sanitizer. Uh, this is the 99% hand sanitizer soap stuff. Again, none of this stuff in particular is sponsoring this, this video or anything or this video series. It's just these are the sort of tools that I use. I got my hand soap from my local Poundland, again, for a pound. Um, the da Vinci soap, I got it on Amazon for like five, six quid, like two years, actually longer than that. Jeez, about five years ago. Uh, the brush soap will last you a lot longer than the hand sanitizer stuff. And so uh, this is one of my dry brushes. And in the cuticle, I've, you know, I, I use this for dry brushing a lot of uh, greens for my Nurgle armies, things of that nature. And so I do tend to go through a lot of dry brushes. And because of that, because I go through a lot of dry brushes, um, I like to make sure that they stay safe. And so this this one's actually done and it's dry and it's 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 actually usable. So I'm going to put that in the pot over there. However, what I like I like to do now, regardless of the manufacturer, over here we've got some army painter brushes. Here we've got some Citadel brushes. Um, it doesn't matter. And here we've got some cheapy brushes I picked up on Amazon. It doesn't really matter the manufacturer of the brush. Um, what does matter is the cleaning up step and the prep step and various other things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and clean up these GW brushes. Okay, this is my shade brush. Now the reason why this you're hearing this bristle tap is because it's full of brush soap. So what you got to do is you've got to gently work it out. That's what this white stuff is in here, guys. It's actually brush soap. Okay, and what I'm doing is I'm doing concentric circles. Okay, just simple concentric circles. Okay, we're going to do some simple concentric circles, like so. So the brush soap is all gone. And I'm going to take the palm of my hand. In fact, I'll go back to the close-up cam again. So I'm going to take this line in my this line in my hand here. Take the brush, clinch it, and curl. And you're going to see how the, the bristles naturally want to follow where the pressure is okay and there we go the bristles naturally just wanted to follow and of course you can rotate the brush like this as you're pulling it through your palm and that will help also sustain sustain the tip okay so that's one done let's do this now that was my uh that was my shade brush this is my starter brush that you get from the start painting sets from GW. Again, none of this is all sponsored. So again, I showed you on the cam, I'm just gonna do this off of close up. So let me go back to the wide angle for you. So, and of course you don't wanna do this with your keyboard and stuff here, it's just. Now what I'm doing is I'm just getting any loose paint particles out because this brush naturally comes with black bristles you can't tell if there's any real paint stuck in it unless you're using a bright colored paint so but again as you can see does it have a hook tip again this is what i use my magnifying light for as well to double check the tip we do have a slight tip uh, a slight hooking on the tip so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put that in the pile over here i've got a collection of brushes here that have a hook tip issue and um, in the next series of videos, you're going to see me fix these hook tip issues using uh, 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 either a uh, eye and, 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 and if you're using hair straighteners or a, uh, a an iron that you use for ironing your shirts. It, it's it's an interesting way what they do to the synthetic brush, what it does to the fibers in the synthetic brush. Um, if you're using a natural horse hair brush, all you would really need. It's just the uh, the brush soap. You really don't have to do these extra steps except for the hand sanitizer to, to draw out any paints, especially if you're using oil paints. Okay, and again, crook of the palm. And we're just going to drag it through and twist, 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 twist. No hook tip on there. And that's not too bad for a basing brush. So there we go. So I'm going to put that there. So these two are actually good to go. So in fact, I'll put them up there in the pot. 
Now these are brushes from uh, the Army Painter. Again, it's another good company that I use. I use their wet palette system. Uh, again, not sponsored. All the products I'm mentioning, guys, I'm not sponsored at all unless it says so on the screen, right? Um, so just a heads up, I'm not even sponsored. You know, I, I, I would normally sponsor my own stuff because I've got my own uh, Amazon business. Okay. This tip is sadly hooked. Okay, so that can join that collection. So, and this is how I, I do this once after a really good paint session after i've painted like five or five or ten miniatures um now if i'm painting an entire army of course you know you're going to want to do this after certain steps and this is what a lot of painters don't like to do because it to them it's the thing that takes up most of their time i however like to do it because If you if you don't do it, then how do you know that your how, how do you know that if your um, if your brushes are good or whatnot? Okay, this one has a hooked tip as well. Okay, and that's fine. Again, all my hooked tip brushes are got staying over here, so that way when I do get around to doing the um, video. Unfortunately, I don't have any hair straighteners with me right this second. So I need a hair straightener. But uh, a hair straightener could do it. A, um, a hair straightener, an iron, any heck, even a, fr uh, a frying pan that's been cleaned, doesn't have any oil in it. Um, you just put it on a low heat, let it build up, uh, and then just gently pour in water. And rotate your brush in fact I'll probably do that here in a bit and um, show you guys how it's done any source of, of a major heat that you can control okay right now this I wouldn't say it's hook tip but it's on the verge okay so this one's still technically usable but I will put it in the hook tip pile just to make sure that I can get that I, there isn't any hook tips if that makes sense guys because a hooked tip um to some it means that you're favoring too much of a, a of an angle case in point if you this is one of the best investments you can get again this is a games workshop miniature hot a miniature holder i do what's known as a finger pressure system what that means is i take my baby finger okay my pointer finger and I'll use that as a guide to guide my hand, as you can see. That way I'm letting the brush and the tip do the work. And when it comes to more finer detailed stuff, again, I will bring up, bring it up under the microphone, uh, under the, 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 the better light, and I will just follow through for a, a, a... But again, I'm always using my baby finger is a uh, uh, standoff so I know I'm not going to go and just stab the, the miniature straight through with the brush and cause nothing but more cleanup issues um, and don't worry this is just brush type you can just it's biodegradable this is why I like Da Vinci because all this stuff is biodegradable it's just uh, beeswax um, so if you're out in the business pick up some raw raw uh, beeswax you can just make your own brush soap okay all right, so this one's actually a flat tip, which means it's not crooked, which means this can actually go into the pot. Pink, that's a good one. And of course, this is one of my uh, go-to wash brushes. As you can see, it's got quite a lot of fair old wash stains up on the, the, the cuticle and, you know, not the ferrous, but the, the cuticle or the, the, the brush. So again, concentric circles, get all that soap out. Again, this is just a, a fresh, clean, a microfiber towel i always buy them in groups of two so i've always got a red one and an orange one i've always i always buy fresh ones um again got them at poundland you know two piece highly efficient effective wet or dry um they're a pound each can't go wrong it's always good to have a couple up on your ready rack behind you in case you have a spillage or or various other things and so 
I've noticed that this brush does have a staining issue um, in the center. What I'll do is I'll do again. We'll go to the close-up cam and I'll show you. Um, if you can look at the center of the brush, it's a completely different color. Come on, focus. There we go. See the tips are lighter, a lighter color, and the center is still dark. That means there's still still paint in there. So how we resolve that? is we're going to use some hand sanitizer soap the gel stuff and i'm literally just going to soak the brush in it i'm literally just going to mix the brush in it so this is what you're seeing me do so i'm going to ro rotate this around so there you go that's all i'm doing it's hand sanitizer it's just literally gel uh, uh, alcohol 99 percent out rubbing alcohol Okay, in a gel form so it can get inside the bristles again work it in work it nice and hard giggity you know just work it in there work it in there and then when you're ready to pull it out make sure you pull out game strong and what it's going to do is it's going to dry and it's going to dry with the bristles see so it is just rubbing alcohol you can even rub it to your fingers just rubbing alcohol see and so I'm going to leave that in the jar there. So we're down to one brush left. We're going to cut back to the wire camera now. So we've got one brush left. I'm going to bring the soap back. Move our miniature out the way. And it's an army paint, a triangle, a hobby brush, small detail. So as I've noticed it's always my small detail brushes that tend to get hook tips because I use them quite a lot for... Um, ultra highlights, faces, things of that nature. Okay, again, gonna wipe off any excess water and just drag it through our palm. And do we have a hook tip? No, we do not. We have a bit of a chisel tip, but that can easily be sorted. A chisel tip is where the cuticles haven't uh, uh, braided, haven't twisted. And that's easily fixed by just twisting it in your palm like this. And now we've got our tip back. There we go. So this is actually a keeper, so that can go into the pot. So we've got... Uh, so I'm going to put the lid back on this real quick. I'm going to toss this out here in a bit. Because I don't really need this old soapy water. But, so we've got a few br brushes here that have hook tip issues and we can fix that easily again using some heat source and some water um, which is why you always want to get things like these, this is just full of water um, and you just want a couple of drips as the pan is sizzling because you want the steam to cause the fibre in the bristles of the brush to open up so that the tips actually then go straight again um, so basically you could even do it over a boiling kettle um, but I don't suggest you do that because you've got to have to boil the kettle constantly. So unless you've got like a gas kettle uh, when you want to have it on a, on a stove and it's just whistling like crazy, you can do that. Um, or if you've got a small little egg frying pan, like a tiny frying pan, um, set it up on a uh, low heat, a small heat, a low heat. You don't want to immediately like saturate the pan with heat because the moment you add the water, it's going to fizzle like crazy. You don't want that. You want the pan to be to brought up to a slow heat, about 150, 200 degrees. Um, so we can do that um and if you guys want to see that let me know and uh, i will do, do a little cutaway short video for you guys where you can see uh, how that's done but uh, for now guys these brushes are mia uh, which means i can't use them right now until i get the hook tip situation sorted uh, i hope you've been liking these little breakaway mini tips guys uh and uh, i'll see you uh, with the rest of the miniature painting Let me just move the microphone so you can at least hear me. Hey guys, how y'all doing? Um, I want to get back into doing a series known as Back to Basics. And what that's going to entail is multiple camera angles <laughs> and me explaining to you how I paint Chaos Space Marines. For example, this is the Chaos Space Marines of the Black Legion. I painted these guys up during my Twitch 
Let me shout out my Twitch real quick. It's twitch.tv slash deceptive cobras. And uh, yeah, so these are my 3D printed Black Legion miniatures for my proxies. So what I'm going to do is a lot of people want to know, you know, uh, it's, they're so afraid to get into miniature painting or just painting in general or wargaming or whatever that they're like, I can't afford to drop two, three, four, five hundred pounds on an army and I'm like, you don't have to. Okay, let, me, let, me, let me make this abundantly clear. You do not have to. Okay, I have two resin 3D printers over there. Those little orange things over there. Those are resin 3D printers. One I paid a uh, just about a little over 100 pounds for. Got it during Black Friday, and the other one I paid 140 something pounds for. Okay, they're called the Vox Lab Proxima and the Vo Vox Lab Polaris. Okay, one is a 5.5 inch printer, the other one is a 6 inch printer, and you can print monsters like this. Okay, this is a big monster. Okay, let me let me put it next to a, a GW miniature that you're gonna probably understand the site scale references. Okay, this is an actual Gangs Workshop released Abaddon the Despoiler. Okay, oh sorry, Abaddon, sorry, the Despoiler. Okay, this is my great demon of corn. Okay, so Abaddon, great demon of corn. Okay, and so you can get a rough understanding of the sort of miniatures that you can print. Look at the detail on this miniature, by the way. Uh, this is this Greta Demon is a miniature that we are painting uh, on stream together. I'm painting it while you guys are watching, and so I mean it's so big I can't even get the whole model in on the close cam. Uh, so there you go. So. A, a scale reference if you want here you go here's my wallet okay yes it's a warhammer wallet okay there is my wallet so that should tell you something this is a this is a a, a great demon of porn okay bear in mind the wings and the tail are not on this miniature um so like i said this does come with wings and a tail i don't have them on um because if i did it would be too big but you get what i'm saying you don't necessarily have to go out of your way to uh spend so much money you can you can get stl files um and even contact a printing company people contact me all the time and say can you print me 30 space marines can you print me uh um, you know 60 imperial guard and i'm like, okay cool and i'll print them off give i'll give them a quote if the quote is acceptable to them i will then print them off I will then clean up the models, put them in a box, ship them to them, and I have a happy customer. You know, so it's not necessarily, but now I'm gonna get back to the whole back to basics part, which is what you need to do. And the best way to describe that is we're gonna start with the most simplest things, brushes. Now, I know this sounds silly, but I recently did a video, I'm going to splice it in here somewhere, um, where I was explaining hook, hook tips. Now a hook tip is where the tip of the brush is either hooked this way or it's hooked that way. But that's just through constant stroking in one direction, where you haven't rotated the brush as you're stroking. Happens all the time. Happens all the time. There is a way of straightening those brushes. I actually did straighten up a whole bunch of my brushes uh, because they had some hook tips. So this is the only one I've got left to, to work, really work on. I just use it. It's just Citadel starter brush. Don't really worry about it. Now, if you go to Poundland or Dollar Tree or whatever, you're going to get a collection. You, and you ask them for, for brushes. You'll find those little white-haired brushes that aren't really good for anything. Those, those brushes shouldn't even be made anymore. They are not worth a damn. Okay, just walk away. Don't If, that, if that's all those brushes that that store has, walk away. Go to, to, to a, a Home Depot or a Lowe's, or wherever, okay, just walk away, okay, just walk away, those brushes aren't, just look on Amazon, you can get a cheap set of, 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 uh, of synthetic brushes, that's what these are, I mostly deal with synthetics, um, actual proper real brushes that you can get, um, horsehair brush or, or, or fox hair brush or whatever, they're quite expensive, they're known as Da Vinci's or, or, or you know, 
point is, you don't need super expensive brushes, okay? I also have an airbrush, okay? This isn't a Sternback, this isn't a Soltar, this isn't, you know, one of the, this isn't an Iwada, this isn't a, a, a super duper high-end expensive airbrush. This is a brush that came with my compressor and has a collection of needles um, for different sizes and thicknesses and stuff. I mean, heck, here you go. It came with two brushes, okay? So cost me 60 pounds and I only mostly use it now for basing uh, uh, primering uh, and maybe doing a little bit of touch-ups here and there now the reason why I'm doing these series of, of, of videos is because I want to explain to you that you don't necessarily need also a hundred thousand paints and if you're looking at my desk you can see all these separate paints okay and you're probably thinking do I? and I've got more paints down there and i've got more paints over there you, you don't need this many paints i only have those because i paint a wide variety of miniatures ranging from uh, world war one world war two modern era to fantasy okay um i even um, i'm even getting into doing bursts um so if you actually look here we've got a really nice owen rommel uh burst one of my favorite uh, tank commanders. I've even got uh, Marvel superhero bursts. Uh, and so like I said, I'm getting it. The reason why I'm getting into bursts is because it was it's gonna teach me zenithal lighting, um, contrasts and various other things. So that aside, okay, I paint, heck I even paint sci-fi ships. Here you go, here's a uh, Star Fury from Babylon 5. One of my favorite ships of one of my favorite sci-fi shows growing up as a kid. So. Now let me get down to the paints, okay? I use a whole swath of paints from different paint companies, even some unbranded paints. Case in point, this is an unbranded pot of red paint. It just says red, okay? I got this from a 18 pot collection. I've, I've still got, there you go. I mean, I've, I've still got some left here. Okay, there's a black. Um, here's a brown and it cost me I think like six pounds for 18 paints on Amazon all acrylic Works with regular acrylic thinners. You can get from Tamiya or wherever or even just regular tap water. It doesn't really matter and then I use paints from uh, uh, Vallejo um, I've got several of their paint systems from their skin sets to the, the medieval leather sets to you, you name it and even their metallics as well. I do like their metallics. The metallics do water down quite well, but they don't like um, wet palettes that much. They did, when they dry out, they clump. Um, so if you've got them on your wet palette, kind of sucks. Now, and yes, I even have Gamed Up Games Workshop Citadel color paints. This is their uh, Air Bad and Black. Again, I can put it in my airbrush, but it also means it's pre thinned, which means I don't have to worry about thinning it even more or constantly having to keep shaking the bloody paint. Of course, rule of thumb, always shake your paints so that leads me to what kind of tools do i need now you don't need super duper expensive uh, uh uh tools i've got a cheap and cheerful paint shaker here um to save on my wrist because i'm, I'm old now i'm in my 40s so i got a simple paint shaker put your paint pot in here put it over press a button 30 seconds later well shaken paint Okay, got this for like eight pounds on Amazon. Um, what else do I have? I also have Jewelers magnifying marks. I am blind as a bat without my glasses, but I've got these buckets. Now, yes, these do technically have like a little USB light. Um, I kind of took the batteries out of them so they don't work. But the point is, when I'm doing like really 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 fine detailed stuff like faces or i'm entering a competition i will simply just take these bring them down grab the miniature and now i can clearly see everything i need to see you know again i think these were like under 10 pounds on amazon you know um you don't need fancy paint pot washers or anything like that. Just seriously, you don't. You can just get away with just a regular cup, water, shake the bloody brush. You don't need 
anything in particular, nothing fancy at all wise. Uh, a, a good light source is pretty much the only thing that you need. You can use natural light, or you can use, you know, something like this, a little simple magnifier. Again, I think this was under 15 pounds, 20 pounds on Amazon. USB powered, you can plug it into your laptop, your computer, or a power bank, or a brick, or wherever. And again, this has a magnifying glass on it. So if I don't want to fancy wearing the headset if it's too hot, I can then just take it, grab this, and just start painting. Do you see? It's simple, it, it's easy, it's light, it's quick, it does the job. Um, and so, tools and stuff aside, good brush, good light source, and your imagination. That's all you need, guys, okay? If you're following what's on the box, Okay, and what I mean by that is, is if you buy a squad of Space Marines, they're always going to be in the Ultramarines chapter colours. They're always going to be Ultramarine blue with, with bronze and, or gold or whatever. So if you buy a box set of Ultramarines, and say you're doing, I don't know, Soul Drinkers that are uh, more of a lich purple, okay? Painting them blue to match what's on the box doesn't mean that they're Soul Drinkers anymore. It just means that they're confused Ultramarines, if that makes sense use your imagination pick what and that's nothing print off a color wheel okay you can find them online for free just type into to your favorite search engine universal color wheel okay and it and, and make sure you've got a good printer of course and print it off and then have it like off to the side and then go back to it and realize okay well actually Pink is a good teal, a, a good contrast color to teal blue. So now you're doing, so you're doing Emperor's Children, okay? They, their primary colors is pink and black, okay? So you don't want to do pink and black. So you wanted to do teal blue and whatever. It doesn't matter. It's your, it's your army, okay? Paint it how you like. It's up here, guys. It's your imagination, okay? So case in point, my basics when i'm painting a, a specific chapter for example i'm doing a a black legion chaos space marines which is chaos undivided is what i consider it um i also have a death guard army which means i use lots of greens so i'm trying to incorporate both into some miniatures and, and not into others but i'm primarily working on the, the, the death guard, not death guard sorry on the um black black legion right now and the only way you can actually do that is to. I'm just going to sort something out on my computer real quick. And the only way you're going to get around to doing that is to pick your color wheel. Once you've got your color wheel and you've got your colors and everything else in, 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 in general and whatnot. Find the basic colors that you need, okay? For a, a, a for you know a black legion, you kind of need black. Hence the term black legion. So I use the colors air, abaddon, black. Okay, primary color. Use that as your base coat, despite your primer. Now for me. Um, I'm not including this. You can always buy a rattle can of primer, but I use um, Vallejo Surface Primer. Okay? This is the one I use. It's a polyurethane primer, which means it doesn't matter if it's an oil-based paint, acrylic-based paint, whatever, it's going to stick to this paint. It's going to leave such a beautiful surface. It is an absolute joy to use as a primer. Oh, so glad I got this at my local hobby store. Now, you're going to need... Uh, a gold for the trim. I use Retributor Armor. Again, you can get the, these, all, most of these colors you can get in actual start painting sets. I believe Games Workshop used to do a start painting set uh, um, Black Legion. I re if I remember correctly, it was lacking like 2018, early 2018. I was in my local hobby shop, Games Workshop in Boston, where I, where I was living at the time, and I had one on the shelf and I picked it up. It included that. It included this Citadel brush, this Citadel basic brush, and some basic paints. Okay, so there's your gold for your trim. Now you're going to need uh, a silver, in which case I would use a lead belcher if you've got it. Okay, if you don't have it, 
then use it's not it's gun silver there it is it's gun gun metal use use uh, Vallejo gang color gun uh, uh, gun metal for your silver okay then you're gonna want to use Ushanti bone or you can use uh, Morgan Haas bone either or I would prefer that you it, it, because I'm make keeping this as a beginner for you guys we're gonna use uh, the Morgan Haas bone not the Ushanti bone I use Ushanti as a final little highlight thing for myself but anyway so there's our bone colors now, Black Legion like to use their tabards, and one of their favorite colors is red. So we're going to use a Mephiston red. That's it, base Mephiston red. It's a base color, which means it's going to have good coverage, good lay down, good everything. Okay, so there's our red. Now, by the way, we've already met the bare minimum requirements for a tournament. Just with these five colors. Tournaments state that your army that your army must be made up of a minimum of three colors. Some tournaments say four colors. Well, there's five. Now let's add in a little bit of diversity, if you will. So we're going to throw in unknown oil shade. Now this is going to take all these four colors, these these five colors, and tweak them to make them completely different colors. Okay. And then to add extra kicker on top, we're going to throw in a little Reichland Flesh Shade as well. Okay? So, two shades. And, of course, in case I want to add a little bit of extra diversity in, in, into the miniatures, we're going to throw in some uh, Air White Scar or Ceramite White Base, depending on, on what I'm doing. So, and you don't even necessarily need the white. Now... Another thing I like to do is if I'm painting flesh, and you're going to notice that these series of Chaos Space Marines I'm painting, a lot of them don't have helmets on. So that's going to be a skin tone we're going to have to paint. So let's incorporate the skin tone, shall we? So best way to incorporate that skin tone is to find a skin color, of course. Now you could do dwarf bronze, you could do dwarf flesh, uh, you could do this. There's tons of different ways to do flesh. But for me, again, I am going to use Malogra Vallejo. And we're going to start off with a basic skin tone. Now, you can just stick with the basic skin tone and use washes. Like Rack and Flesh Shade. And then go back over with your basic skin tone, water down, and use it as a glaze to pick out certain things. Okay? But for the sake of time in this video, I'm actually going to grab this color now, which is Light Flesh. And use that or you could actually add white or black in with your basic flesh tones to make it lighter or darker or even little drops of blue uh, you can use like um, ultramarine blue or any just any blue in with the skin tone and it will actually give it like a little five o'clock shadow that's a little tip that most people don't really understand um, is how you can actually do like like uh, Again, five o'clock shadows and, and whatnot on people on, on faces. Now you know. So here's our skin tone. Okay. Take 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 our, our contrast, uh, our uh, washes out. So we've got our base colors right there, which is these two. Our accent colors, which are these two. Okay. And then our, our shade to bring them all together. Okay. And then skin. So we not only have we kept it basic... Okay, we're going to use basic tips and skills to get this to work. Okay, guys, so there's our color choice. Okay, we've got our miniature ready, ready to prep and to, and, and, and to go. So this is the miniature that we're going to be painting for this video tutorial. Okay, again, this is a miniature that's from my, my, my 3D printing company. Okay, he's actually a kit bash of like three other cow Space Marine miniatures I've got. The head is from one set, the... the body and torso the, the, the legs and torso from a different set the arms and shoulder pads and the backpack is from a different set i just wanted to make my my miniature stand out even more and so uh the next colorway you're going to see here is uh it's us actually starting to throw some color down on this guy and uh yeah guys hopefully you'll enjoy this video and uh, if you do please give the video a thumbs up i greatly appreciate it and uh let's get cracking Hey guys, and so 
we've got our wet palette out now this is the wet palette system from uh, oh crap it's the wet palette system from army painter again not sponsored any product you see me using here I can guarantee you unless I say it's sponsored not sponsored um, I like using a wet palette because it means I'm not necessarily using all of my my paints in fact it keeps my paints dry a lot drier than, uh, a lot more um, usable than normal okay so what I'm gonna do is like always now I'm not gonna use my now that that tapping in hearing is because I put a little ball bearing in there to keep the paint loose and break it up Okay, so what we're going to do now, I'm going to use the uh, GW Start Get Started brush. I'm going to load up the brush with a bit of paint. We're going to put it down on the wet palette. Okay, and then that's it. We're going to put the cap on the paint. So if it knocks over, it's not going to go anywhere. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate the brush. Okay. Now this is the part when you're painting the miniature where you don't have to be precise. Okay, you do not have to be precise. So what we're going to do is I'm going to find a spot that I want to start painting on, which is going to be the trim. That's what we're painting here. And so I'm going to find a little spot back here. Yeah, it's a little bit too much. Okay, and then we're just going to follow the trim. If we miss the trim, don't worry about it. You know, if we get it on the main color, again, don't worry about it. We've got our chaos black to clean up any mistakes that we make. And, you know, even Bob Ross said, you know, it's okay to make a mistake, you know. You know, they're not called mistakes, they're called happy little clouds, remember. And so, it doesn't matter if you make a, a happy little cloud or not. Okay. As long as it's not a happy little nuclear mushroom cloud, if you know what I mean. I print, I'm pretty sure Bob Ross's family, or even Bob Ross himself, wouldn't be able to save that kind of mistake. And so, again, we don't have to be super, super neat here. We're just getting basic coverage down. Okay. I'm going to use the close-up cam to show you what I'm talking about. See? We're just throwing some gold down on the trim. Okay? So what we're doing is we're just throwing color on the trim. Now, I am going back to the palette to keep the brush hydrated. To keep the paint hydrated. Which means, because metallic paints will dry out pretty quick. Um, and if you oversaturate, if you get them too wet, the uh, metallic will pull away from the actual paint and you get like this little um, uh, glitter effect and that's not good because that means if it's in there it's in there and so I'm going to do this for the other guys in the squad and like I said I'm going to paint all five of them up today we've already got two of them started and so we've got the sergeant Again, who's not wearing a helmet, he's already started. And we've got a regular grunt right there on the close-up, so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. And so, I'm just going to move the microphone a little bit on my shoulder there for a second. I apologise about that, guys. I hope you can hear me just nicely. Do you have a fan going off and behind me? Because it's not even... It's barely just turned 8.30 in the morning, and it's 65 degrees Fahrenheit. And I live in the top part of the house. So everyone knows basic thermal dynamics. Heat rises, cold falls. So all the heat in the house is coming up into my room right now. Um, it will not surprise me if this room does not reach probably 90s, if not 100 today. Um, we are beginning to have a, our typical English summer heat wave. Um, then it's usually followed up by a little mini monsoon. We are a small island country. 
Uh, only we're not like the Bahamas, which means we don't get nice weather all year round. Uh, so, yeah. So like I said, all we're doing is we're just finding trim on these legs. Now, there's a reason why I chose these legs uh, to 3D print for this tutorial. Again, these, these miniatures are for you guys. Um, if you guys want what I'll do on my website, uh, once I get my website sorted and, and, and released, I will um, post the STLs on there for you guys to use. For, so you, if you want, you can print these miniatures off for free. Um, and that's how we got uh, gold. Sorry. Notice how we got gold on the guy's bolt gun. Don't worry about that. Again, do not worry about... See, a lot of people will cheat. Well, I don't say cheap, but they have an alternate way of painting Black Legion. Is where they will spray paint the entire guy, Balthazar Gold. And then just use Chaos Black to fill in the middles. That is one way of doing it. I'm not saying it's, you know, there's, there's, many, there's more than one way to skin a cat. And again, notice how I'm moving the miniature. I'm keeping my painting hand comfortable. And I'm moving the miniature, not my hand. Once I've found a comfortable position to paint in. Um, another thing is I'm normally listening to an audiobook or some music. Um, and the fact that I'm not just for this video this video series is kind of like, I wouldn't say it's off-putting. But it's making my brain go, uh, we should be listening to uh, a Dan Abnett book by now. Um, I've probably listened to all but maybe two less than that um but uh, uh audiobooks on audible again not sponsored um i've spent probably close to about a thousand pounds plus <laughs> um on getting credits and getting audiobooks and and i really am digging um let's see i've done i've got both books from the black legion series um which oh Chef's Kiss, good series. It's actually what led me into starting to get uh, and paint Abaddon the Despoiler. Apart from the fact that the ex, the ex, well, the then girlfriend at the time is now my ex girlfriend. She had already bought him for me for Christmas. Um, so he's been sitting in my pile, not my pile of shame because I hadn't even put them together, um, but in my pile of, of un, untouched min, uh, boxes of miniatures because I've got. Um, when GW did their anniversary, uh, I've still got a, a, a Marine from the anniversary set that's been untouched, and apparently he's worth a few bob now. I didn't know that at the time, so. Uh, I will paint him though eventually. I'll get round to it. Uh, so, I'm just touching up the trim, giggity, and looking at areas where I think it would look, it would be a, a contrast. To see, you know, like there's a, a, a skull on the guy's knee pad. I think that'd look cool just painted up with the bone and not the gold. So I'm not going to touch that with the gold. Again, I'm making executive decisions as I'm painting. Um, and we've got, again, you don't have to be 100% super precise, you know, but it does help. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to touch up certain points. And again this is just one of like two other miniatures I've got to touch and paint today so and I do them in batches because while you're waiting on one to dry you can be painting the other one and eventually before you know it you've got the entire squad done you know or you know, you've got some time set aside that you can devote to paint in your your sergeant or your lieutenant or whatever. Because you're going to spend, eventually you're going to realise that a lot of players will spend, painters especially, will spend extra time, you know, painting their sergeants and their, their heroes and whatnot. Because you want them to stand out. You want other... Get, uh, uh, other uh, players to look at and say mate you know oh cool that's a cool sergeant you know or that's a cool 
lieutenant or that's a cool uh, couch champion or you know um, it's why GW go out their way to make really nice um, hero models in uh, dynamic poses not so much in static boring poses um, and I think that's really cool I think it's really neat at GW to do that um, also another thing you should also think about doing and it's something I haven't done just yet and I just realized I should do it take any watches or jewelry off because you don't want them to catch um, it's a pain in the ass when they do so I'll take my smart watch off that's not really necessarily smart sometimes Just gonna do something on my computer real quick. I do apologize for that, guys. Autopilot engaged. Autopilot engaged. I'm playing Eve Online. Well, mining. Warp drive active. While playing Eve Online. So. And again, I'm just doing the gold trim. And looking like like the, there's the skull on the side of the gun here that I think would look cool. Gold. And if your brush tip gets all icky and clogged up, like it does here, you know you're gonna want to get a uh, a watering cup. I've got one. I'm just gonna grab it real quick. It's old. It's used. It's seen better days. But all I use it for is for washing brushes. Again, just gonna. So, I'm going to move our paint pot cup there, and now I'm going to go back straight back to paint. Okay, straight back to it. If you notice that your brush is actually starting to get clogged with uh, dried up paint, again, wash the brush, you know, and come back. Sometimes it's, and that's another thing, don't be afraid to take breaks. Um, I once took a four month, five month even hiatus off from painting miniatures. I just, I got burnt out and at that time it was during like the COVID lockdown and whatnot. And I just genuinely didn't have anywhere to play or anything to do. Um, streamed on Twitch a little bit and even my stream, my, my followers on Twitch were like, you know, um, when's the next paint tutorial? And I'm like, I'm really not in the mood to paint anymore. And I know now I just noticed something on the inside of the lake there. There we go, that got it. And so, like I said, find yourself a good audio book, um, a motivating music track, stuff like that. Just something that you're gonna enjoy listening to. And, and for me, it's like I'm a child of the 80s, so I listen to a lot of uh, Def Leppard, uh, Guns N' Roses, um, things of that nature, you know. Um, or lately, like I said, audio books have been a thing for me, um, been learning a lot of audiobooks. Now we just got a little bit of gold on the guy's chin, and that's fine. You know, it's not going to hurt. Yeah. You know. Like I said, it's okay to make mistakes, guys. It's okay to make mistakes. Don't you don't have to be super, super, a hundred percent neat at this stage. Uh, of because, like I said, we're just doing the trim. When we get to doing things like um, the face or, or whatever, then yeah, you're going to have to be a little... I think we're not also going to be using this brush to do that. That level of work, that level of detail or intricacy or... You know. Sorry about the background noise, guys. I do live close to a primary school. And so what you're hearing is you're hearing the kids... You know, it's a Friday, so to them it's like, whoa, we're going to get the weekend off, you know. And so they're happy and whatnot. And I 
like I said, it's per perils of living where you live, if that makes sense. And so I'm just going to touch up here. Alright, and then I'm going to show you. We're working right here. And so as you can see, oh, sorry, as you can see, we've touched up. You can see there's tons of mistakes. You know, we've missed the, the trim. Well, we've hit the trim, but we've also hit the actual regular armor. That's not a problem. Okay, we're going to take him off the miniature holder now. We're going to put him with his buddies. We're then going to grab another Chaos Space Marine. We're going to put him in the grabber. I'm just going to hydrate the brush a little bit. And notice how we haven't gone back to the pot yet for more paint. Um, again, like I said, there are times when you don't have to do that. And sometimes you'll see me paint my skin like that. That's because I just want to see how well the uh, paint's flowing. If it's flowing too, like I said, flowing too quick, um, it's going to be too thinned, which means we're going to have to go back over it. And that does happen sometimes, guys. And it's not necessarily a good thing. Yeah? Because it means you're... This isn't a speed painting guide. Okay, that's another thing, guys. Bear in mind, you could technically try and speed paint this. Um, not that I suggest it. Okay? This 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 guide that I'm doing, this, this whole entire video series that I'm doing, is not meant to say, Hey, guys, you know, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, and F voila you've got you know golden demon you know that's that's not what i'm saying or because if that's the case then i wouldn't be doing i would be doing non-metallic paint series and, and showing you guys how to get a metallic effect without using metallic paints um because everyone considers using metallic paints ch as cheating um especially in things like golden demon and whatnot and frankly i don't care um as long as it gets your primed or your unpainted miniatures you know off your shelf and into your army but into your army case and off to a tournament or off to uh, your local gaming group or wherever you know then it's a win to me you know, and it's a win for the player base in general so that's ultimately what this entire video series is for okay guys uh, again no judgment Right, I I don't care if your stuff looks like you know you you've never touched a brush in your life. It doesn't matter. Okay, not all of us are, are you know golden demon winners. You know, and if you if you really want to get good, the only way you get good is by practicing. You know, practice makes you better. It doesn't make you perfect. You know, practice does not make anyone perfect. It just trains your brain to say this is what we're doing okay now bear in mind i <laughs> i can't paint long sessions like i used to so i might cut these sessions down into little mini clips so you may see me wearing completely different clothes you know um that's because i do suffer from arthritis in my hands and so sometimes it's actually quite painful for me to hold a brush this long but I'm more than willing to do it because I want everyone else to get better you know a, a, a rising tide lifts all ships my friends you know there's no DVDs to buy from me there's no patreon for you to whatever you know if you like what you see here just hit the subscribe button on YouTube yeah it's all it is you know it's one little click for you you know, according to the algorithm, it means everything. You know, not that I would know. I don't work for the boob tube. Um, I am just trying to get these miniatures. I, I want to show you guys that even if you're, you're painting this bad, and I would consider this bad painting because I'm purposely making mistakes now. Okay? To, to show you guys that no matter how bad... I mean, case in point, take a look at that leg. Okay? 
that leg is an absolute mistake look at it it's all over the place but that doesn't matter okay it's not a, it's not a rembrandt it's not it's not a picasso it's not a michelangelo it's 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 all over the place it's an absolute disgrace okay the painter in me just wants to just go, Ugh, kill it you know wants to wants to shrek it as they say but you know what i don't care because to me it's just the beginnings okay stop you know how do you think a stonemason feels or, or an architect feels when they first break ground he's ecstatic why because he's got an end goal he's got an end vision in his head and what he sees in front of him is just the beginning okay so stop seeing what it looks like now and go oh god it's crap it's going to turn out crap and everything's crap and this is crap and that's crap and crap and crap okay yeah yeah okay granted it looks crap now but after a while once you've put a little bit of effort into it and that's another thing a lot of people don't want to put the effort in and it shows okay it's like i go to a i've started going to a gym a lot more often now because again during lockdown i wasn't able to do anything i wasn't able to go out i wasn't able to, to you know and i put on a lot of weight and i really need to lose about six to eight inches around my waist to get back into a, a, a bmi that i'm proud of body mass index if you wonder what that means guys that i'm i'm even remotely happy with and um it's gonna take a while you know and when I'm at the gym, I do see all the, 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 and I hate to call them this, but I do see all the gym rats, okay, and all you bodybuilders know exactly what I'm talking about, okay, they're the girls that hang out and just look at all the guys and say, oh, he's squatting 250, he's squatting 300, he's squatting 450, you know, oh, I would like to see what, you know, he could do to me, you know, kind of thing, and so they'll start approaching guys at the gym and, it's like, um, God, you're so good at this. Could you be my gym? You know, could you be my gym partner? Kind of thing. And it, I, I, I've seen so many dudes fall for it. And all of a sudden, they're exchanging phone numbers and WhatsApp and this and that. And all of a sudden, they start bank knocking boots. And it never turns out well because either she's got a boyfriend or he's got a girlfriend, you know. And Jeremy Kyle, here we come. You know what I mean? It, it never ends well. Never ends well. And then I can't say anything because my uh, my ex was on Jeremy Carr. Not even joking. My uh, daughter's my baby mama. She was on an episode of Jeremy Carr. All right, so we're, we're we're throwing down the basic gold. That's all that matters, guys. Is that's what we're doing. Give me a sec. <clears throat> wow, my throat is really dry. Okay. Now I'm just going to drag this out a little bit. Looks like we might have to put a little bit more gold in. That's fine. Again, this lamp does put out some heat, so... Grab some paint, put it right back there. Close that down. Then we're going to rotate the brush. And then so we're going to hit the collar on the front here. Again, I know I'm going to hit his face. Don't really care. Again, so on the gun, we've got a little got chaos mark there. Again, this paint's been... Uh, um, because it's just been put to the, to the pad it's quite wet and runny and, and just wants to go anywhere and that's fine we can still use it yeah I just realized there's a actual support on this miniature I didn't remove so I'm just gonna go click and break that off there we go we got hit with the primer so that's why I couldn't see it it just blended right in Gone now. And there we go. Just 
gonna get in the open it was a bit on the leg there we missed. Again when it comes to doing stuff like this, remove the miniature, not your hand. Because once your hand's found a comfortable position, it will let you know. You'll get uh, knuckle cramps and again I used to paint armies for Gangs Workshop way back in the day before heavy metal was heavy metal. Um, Games Workshop Plaza in central London. It's no longer there, I don't think. If it is, it's been gutted. Because I know GW shut down some of their shops a long time ago. Alright, so you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, we've lined out the gold on this guy. One more guy left. And then we're ready for the next step. Okay, so we're going to add him to his friends. Now this guy has a flamer. Root, root. Nice. Again, so we're going to go right back to the gold. Pick a spot. I tend to start at the bottom and work my way up. So we're going to... Start with this guy's... Back trim. Again, once you've gotten used to it and the speed, and you can go at any speed that you're comfortable with. Again, just as long as, you know, you just, this isn't, again, this isn't a speed painting guide, okay? But what this is, it's just a simple... bare essentials if you know what I mean this video is to show you that you can get really good results you know without really super duper expensive contrast paints and and, and, and various other things and whatnot and again I'm not sponsored by Games Workshop I'm not sponsored by any products that you see me use here with the exception of the miniatures they are from my store and so these are not actual 40k miniatures unless I say this is a 40k miniature, if that makes sense guys. Everything else is a proxy from my web from from my 3D printing store. So just a heads up there. Alright guys, so now you know. Now I've gotten all of that silliness out of the way, because again a lot of people they're like, dude, where did you get this from? Where did you get that from? It's like page three of this website. And I'll send them to my uh, online store. And they're like, oh wow. Yeah. Well, it's a little bit expensive. And I'm like, what do you mean? It's 15 quid. Yeah, I know it is. But if you really wanted to buy that from James Workshop, you're looking at about 200. You know? What? Yeah, you're looking at about 200. For that? Yep, for that. That's a bit expensive. Yeah, it's Games Workshop for you. See, GW initially used to make their money um, with the rule books and the paints and the accessories. See, that's how car manufacturers make their money 90% of the time now. They don't make it in selling the car, they make it in selling the parts. What? Tell us more, Cobra. Okay. A Ford dealership, Chevy dealership, GM dealership, whatever, it doesn't matter. The car dealership, okay? It costs them about 15 to 20 thou per car made, okay? About 23 to 26 per truck. Um, in labor costs, things that say on raw materials, etc, 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 okay? So they sell it for about 70 70k, okay? So dealer adds in his markup too so case in point the new lightning um, which is a fucking disgrace has turned into an electronic vehicle it's an e-vehicle it's an EV truck okay so you can buy a Ford Lightning which is technically not a Ford Lightning anymore because it doesn't use a uh, actual petrol engine which it should it uses an electric engine I mean don't get me wrong I'm all for it I'm all for it I mean literally just Across the street from where I live, there's a freaking Tesla's dealership, okay? 
and not once have I ever seen that place keep a car in stock. So I know there's stuff selling, okay? But if you were to contact Tesla and say my car's got this physical issue, like I, I, I you know, ding my my right fender, okay? And say, so, okay, bring your car into us. You know, it will cost you, you know, four or five grand, okay? So you're paying five grand to have a fender, you know, fixed, where it costs Tesla maybe a hundred quid to have that fender stamped out by a machine, or they'll just pull one off the assembly line, put it in a box and send it to the dealership, or the dealership or has already gone and had extras shipped because they know that it's a common fault you know um there's several common faults with with car companies case in point transmissions okay there's a reason why dodge stopped doing their lifelong things with their transmissions they used to do this thing of, of you know you've got a hundred thousand mile or four year warranty on your on your gearbox on your transmission Okay, for whoever, for the length of that truck. Okay, so even if you sell that truck, that warranty moves on with that truck. Well, they stopped doing that magically after it came out that they're using shit transmissions that magically seem to just die after you name it 90 to 100,000 miles. Now, does that seem fair? That their warranty wears out, you know, just before their transmissions do? That I mean, this is like way back in the day, like, like, yeah. So don't. It's not like it. They do it now, and I'm not saying they they do. But my point is, it's called planned obsolescence. But most car companies, okay, most most companies in general, okay, make their money in the aftermarket more so than anywhere else all right so i flame a guy he's got his gold added i might go around and just touch up certain parts or places but for now they have their gold trim all five of them so that's going to go there i'm just going to wash this brush real quick now comes the best part and that is the silver because we do the metallics now okay and get them out the way so now that was the gold okay that was the um retributor arm okay now we're gonna next step will be the gunmetal so you'll see that in the next uh, clips so until then, guys, I'll see you in the next bit. <laughs> hey, guys, welcome back. Um, the miniatures have had some time to dry now. And so, I'm, again, I'm going to leave these guys here. So you guys got these ones that are unfinished. Well, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to grab my wet palette. Now these are some of the brushes that I'm going to be using. You don't, again, you guys, you don't have to have a ton of brushes to 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 do what I'm doing. And so now it is time to do the silver. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a look at the miniature and roughly look at the areas that need to be painted silver. So there's actually really not that many areas on this guy, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway because what well, has to be done and so what the hey and so of course we're going to be using our game color uh, uh, gun metal and so I'm going to rotate my color around real quick and put the color right down there Okay. And we're going to be using a 
sure that it'll base brush. Just gonna drag it out so we've got a good tip. So I'm gonna paint the saw. There's of course that saw's got to be saw. And of course at a later date we can maybe use washes, glazes, things of that nature to add more effects to the sword. Then Hummel, Frost Guard. In fact, I'm thinking I might actually paint uh, some parts of the sword gold. Again, just going to try and rehydrate the brush a little bit. There we go. That's too wet. Get some more paint. It's turning into a little glitter effect. And that, again, as I was telling you, that's not good because uh, it means that the paint separating from the medium it just means there's more work for you to do later on which isn't good because that's not what we're here for okay so that's that now I'm going to look at doing the, the pipes on the power pack with the backs and don't forget guys, you've got to move, move the model, not the brush. Now I've just accidentally stabbed his shoulder pad. But don't worry about that, because like I said, we're going to be cleaning that up. And a separate stage for that. Okay. back of the leg real quick and you could use an off grey for that um, you could use an off grey you could use um, your own custom your own custom grey there's tons of different colours that you could use for that for the uh, inner working gear. Now, as for me, I am just painting the bolt pistol, giving it a bare bones, a bit of colour so it really stands out. Alright, and we're going to get these grills. Because they're actually technically exhaust vents. For how the power pack breathes. Um, now what else am I going to do? You know it's got these spikes on the top. I'm thinking it would be a bit too much. Uh, but it's got these little metal plates either side. So I'll do those instead. And again. Less is more, guys. That is something that a lot of people don't seem to understand. Um, when you say less is more, they're like, how the hell is less more? It's like, okay, well, one, you're, you're watching a video series on how to paint miniatures, you know, to a point where you can get them on the tabletop and not waste, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 hours of your life painting one miniature, then realize I've got another 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 of these to do. I'm never going to get around to actually gaming. So the idea of this is to, to get your miniature painted so that we can get it on the tabletop. Okay, so here we, are, here we go. As you can see, the sword blade's painted, the bolt pistol's painted. Um, we've broke up part of the power pack, as you can see. This is just the first guy, so I'm going to let him out. 
and we're going to grab our next one. We're going <laughs> to put him in our gripper. Okay. And we're going to take a look at him real quick. Okay, so on the back, again. We're going to do the back of the knees. I'm going to do vents, not the vent tubes, vent covers, and again, what we're doing is we're just moving. And make sure we're keeping the brush pretty much the same. Oh, this brush has got a hook to tip, unfortunately. And then now we're going to do any chain link that we see. Um, okay, now on the bolter, on the bolt gun itself, do the barrel. some silver on his hand that's fine like I said guys we're not looking for perfection here it's the one thing we're not looking for at this stage again at this stage you can be messy okay you'll get you'll know when I'm, I'll tell you not to be messy because I'll say okay now now we've got to be you know the brush has got to be on its best behavior now if that makes sense and then we're going to put a dab of silver on the grills on the side of his face and in the back, in the grill so. okay. because this one's the only one where um, his face is actually showing oh, he, he's the only one that's actually wearing a helmet, sorry alright so, as you can see, oh, sorry, as you can see, the silver has broken him up. Okay, even on the rear, the silver's broken up the, the main colors. So that's two down, three to go. So we're going to do the flamethrower guy now. Okay. Now this is where you would normally just dry brush on the flamethrower. Again, that's a paint technique that... I won't go into today on this video series, but we will um, when we come to doing um, something that, that needs a lot of dry brushing. Um, case in point, I'll discuss dry brushing and that when I come to painting, putting some more paint on the Bloodthirster. Because I do a lot of dry brushing on him. bit windy out today which isn't a bad thing I guess okay, and we'll put some there handle again this is just this isn't a master class on how to have a uh, golden demon or anything so this won't win you any awards per se to start off with but it'll get you on the right track, if that makes sense. Because that's what it's all about. Now this guy, how 
has some interesting patterns. So again, we're going to do the vents. Again, this will break up the black everywhere. And that's what you want to do. You want to break it up so it's not always I mean I once spent 20 something hours painting a single Dark Angels infantryman and then I realised I am not going to get this Dark Angels army painted in time and if it's my own personal army I'm just going to use for display purposes like have it on display behind me or on a shelf or something and yeah I will take my time I will invest those hours into said miniature okay so there you go got our flamer guy started again from behind silver breaks up the black and the gold so we're three down two more to go Now this poor guy's got some spikes on his knee, on his shin guard. That's where we're going to start. We're going to start there. And he's even got some chain link underneath his tabard, so we'll hit that just briefly. And the bolt gun. Again. Don't have to be super super neat. I mean, you can you can be neat if you really want to. Um, in many retrospects, it will <clears throat> speed up the process because it means it's less clean up that you're doing it in in a different step. So uh, it, it's entirely up to you guys. I personally. Um, just want to get it done you know not for the sake of the video or anything but uh, the fact that the video is going to be running quite a, a length lengthy video okay so we've got the shin guard done this then we'll break up stuff on the power pack rule of thumb remember guys move the miniature not the brush Okay, and you know what I mean by that. Okay, once you've found a comfortable position, okay, and you're like, oh wait, I just gotta, I just gotta, I just, I just, I just, don't, I just, I just, I just, I just, I just, adjust, see, the miniature. Otherwise, you're gonna get issues with your hands, with um, accuracy, a whole slew of problems. Apparently this guy had a hair trapped on his face on it. Again, the silver does break up the, uh, the black and the gold. It does work. Okay. So our last guy in this squad to get his silver. Now he's got some stuff on his face. Um, most notably like implants and things of that nature, he's even got a bionic eye. So it's always good to just get some some colour down on it. That way it breaks it up and easier to spot later on in later stages. Okay, I'm not a fan of how this brush tip's coming out. 
Right. And if need be, if you're not comfortable with the brush, stop and pick a different brush. You know? Um, I'm still using the same brush because it just does. But, uh... In fact, you know what? No, I'm going to stop using this brush. So I'm just going to do the points quick. So I've also got the bolt gun to do. Basing this off of a modern day firearm, that's what that is. That's where the recoil spring would be. That's where the shoulder stock would be, but 40k is 40k. They, they don't believe in shoulder stocks, so. Which doesn't make any bloody sense. I mean, it would. It, I mean, it does, because they're space marines, you know. They're, 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 Chaos or otherwise, you know, they're genetically superhuman, so they've got the actual physical strength to prevent the recoil or to help mitigate recoil. But these things fire miniature rockets. They don't fire actual physical slugs, they fire miniature rockets. So, so the next time someone turns around and says to you, you know, with a bolt or is you know Nothing said from the uh, actual bolt is quite a lot. Thank you very much. Alright guys, so and that's our guy this guy down here. Already sorted. And so next is gonna be the tabard. Okay. And so uh yeah, look forward to seeing that. So we're gonna swap out this water because it's got metal flakes in it. We're also gonna swap out the brush. Because again, they've got metal flakes in. So let me just swap out the water real quick. going to take a break after this bit all right so we're going to put him down we're going to go back to our sergeant and now we're going to be using Mephiston red which is a base color bit of a shake and we're going to pick a different brush now reason why is because we don't want to use the two brushes that we used earlier because they might have um, metallic flake particulates in it and we really don't want to put metallic flakes um, in with the red so we're going to take a little bit of this paint pop it on our palette put the lid on it draw it out to see how the tip reacts. Okay, tip's not too bad. Bit of water here to the side. Okay. And now we're 
just gonna get a little bit too wet. Now again, we can be messy here too, but it's always best not to be, you know, if you can help it. But if you make a mistake and you, and you get the red paint on the gold or anywhere like that, that's fine. Okay, don't beat yourself up. Okay. Just, like I said, take it easy guys. Don't beat yourself up, okay? We all make mistakes. Alright? We all make mistakes. Okay, I'm not squig my miniatures, I'm not um awesome paint job les. You know, even though I miss les. Not seen him post anything in quite some time good guy he is he used to hang out in my live streams once in a while started up his own paint company if I remember correctly Artist Opus is another good good uh, painter from England had his own series of brushes too called the Opus Collection uh, I've been thinking about getting some for myself. Especially the monster brushes. Okay. Now, that's our tabard. Again, bright colour breaks it up. You're probably thinking, whoa, it's a little bit too bright. Don't worry, guys. Don't worry. So we're going to go right back to our flamer dude. Okay. We're going to go straight to our paint. We're going to start slapping it on. I do have another set of these guys, one with a plasma gun. Um, that's going to be for a different tutorial on how I do like a glow effect. Look forward to seeing that, guys. I'm going to start that on the uh, Twitch channel. Now, again, we're not looking to get complete coverage on the first pass. Okay? We're not. We're just not. Because it's not going to happen. Okay? You're covering a really dark color, i.e. black as the primer, with a pigmented color like red. You're going to get streaks, you're going to get brush strokes, you're going to get a whole bunch of things you weren't ready for. And you know what? It's fine, guys. Because by the time you're done, you're going to have some really good looking Chaos Space Marines. And again, you can apply this to any... any um, Any principle of, of, of marine, any anything in 40k actually, Necron, um, anything. And what I mean by that is, you just follow the principles of what I'm teaching you here, which is stick to basics. And then when you want to push yourself skills wise, okay, be my guest. Learn wet blending, learn glazing, learn feathering, learn stippling. You know, learn, you know, all these really cool effects. Because they're just more tools in your toolbox. Okay, all I'm doing is showing you pretty much how a hammer works. Also at this point, if your guy has a helmet, which this guy does, let's paint the eyes. Okay. Now normally I would do like a white lens first and then hit it with a red glaze and then work my way out but again this is for beginners so 
we're going to be doing this as if we was a beginner. And don't worry about not getting it perfect 100%. Okay, it's not what we're trying to do here. Remember, this is, you know, this is meant for people who are just either A, learning, or B, looking to figure out. See, now, I'm going to purposely show you what I've done. Now, see how I've gone outside of his eye lines? In fact, I'll move this over so you can get a bit, little bit more light. If I can. Can I? No, I can't for some reason. Anyway, um, you'll see that I've actually painted outside of his lenses. I did that for a reason. Because we're, we've still got to do the clean-up phase, which means you can be as messy as you want when it comes to the eyes. Or... or loincloths or wherever whatever okay you can be as messy as you want because we're not at the cleanup stage yet okay so we're gonna do this guy's tab on now you could also learn to do glazing and wet blending with tabards like this and this will help you with um, things like capes and um, free flowing fabric say that five times fast free flowing fabric free flowing fabric free flowing fabric <laughs> but um, it will help you with, with those aspects guys alright but right this second, this is just a bare bones, basic tutorial on how to get started into painting. Pretty much, this can be applied to every and any 40k army, not just Chaos Space Marines. You can apply this to regular Space Marines, Orcs, Tau, Eldar, Dark Eldar, Necron, Imperial Guard, it doesn't matter. It really don't. In fact, I have a really cool way of painting Imperial Guard pretty quick. Uh, especially Renegade Imperial Guard, which is what I've got. I've got tons of Renegade Imperial Guard miniatures. Uh, I'm going to be doing some as Worshippers of Nurgle. Um, and some uh, just regular Heretic, which means Chaos Undivided. Alright. So this guy's tabard. There you go. Now again. Just got one guy left. See how quick it goes? How how quick the process goes? It, it once you set your mind to things, guys, you know, and you're in the zone. I mean right now I'm not gonna lie, I've got a um got an audio book, you know ready to play on the computer it's just I figured you know what I need to record this so I can't have the audiobook playing you know so I figured I will just do the recording and when it comes down to painting some regular miniatures for myself I'll save the audiobook for myself again move you notice know, how I'm moving the miniature to get easier access. See? Most people, when they first start painting miniatures, they want to start angling the brush and, and, and doing all this funky thing with their hand and then realize, I've got cramp in my finger. Yeah, it's because you're doing it wrong. And that's another thing. I'm not a huge fan of, of artists that are like this close up with the brush tip. You know, it's like you've got all this brush. Okay, let the hair on the actual brush do the job. Because that's it bloody that's what it's for. Okay. 
And I, I know technically I'm ragging on one YouTuber in particular who does that. I'm not going to say who, because ironically, I am actually part of their paid service. Um, <laughs> but uh, he's, a, he's a really good painter. I love his stuff. Um, I'm vi it's very rare that I'm disappointed by any of the content that he creates. Like I said, I'm a member of his paid website too, so. And in fact, ironically, I've got to give shouts out to him. Because it was him that pseudo convinced me to do this kind of video tutorial. You know, like a back to basics thing for you guys. Uh, or girls. Yeah. And so, I'm going to. So a big shout out to them. So, thank you, Duncan. Duncan Reynolds. Thank you, Duncan. <laughs> You're amazing, mate. Alright, so we're just going to do some little... There we go. Now that's... The line cloth's done. I'm going to go right back to the captain here. Real quick. Double check everything. It's looking good. It's actually looking really good. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pick a different color. In this case, it is going to be um, Mungharst bone. Okay. We're going to start doing the bone now. Again, like before, we're going to grab a. Uh, going to give the paint a shake. Pop the top. I'm going to scoop some up. On my brush, plop it down on the palette. Take some water next to it and then mix the water in with it. Now you'll notice that there's a it's turning a little bit creamy cut like a red in there because I didn't get all the red out of the brush in time. So it's fine. It's actually quite all right because we're going to hide these mistakes pretty easy. Okay. So now we're going to get into doing our skulls, our bone. I'm going to start with the one on his belt buckle. Again, we're not looking to get full coverage on the first stroke, so you're going to need a couple of thin coats, right? You're always going to need thin coats. Because if you keep trying, trying to push um, wet paint on dry paint, it's going to pull that, that dry paint up, and it's not going to look good. Because it will break away and it will look clumpy and horrible and yeah, it's not good. Not good at all. And so, what I'm doing now, you notice how I'm using my baby finger as a rest. So I know how far out I need to take my brush. Okay. A bit more paint on the brush. Again. It's going to take a few coats to get it done, to get it right. And there's a lot of bone on this sergeant miniature, on this sergeant, especially on his backpack. There's like teeth, it looks like teeth. And so we're going to hit them up here in a bit. Okay. And so I'm just going to get this top bit right here. And I've noticed a bit of trim that I missed first time around. Fine. You will notice mistakes like that. Okay. I'm 
And so now we're just going to do these little teeth slash claws on the power pack. Again, guys. Take your time. It's okay to make mistakes. Again, we're not at that point where it's like one mistake and the miniature's like ruined. We're nowhere near there yet. Nowhere near. And even then, to be honest with you, that doesn't actually exist. Um, I know I, I've got so many people on my Instagram that I follow that are uh, tried and true professional golden demon winning miniature painters and they will all tell you it is okay to make mistakes okay what's not okay is not to learn by them okay so make mistakes okay make mistakes it doesn't matter and make mistakes. I know I'm going to make mistakes painting their, these guys' faces. But you know what? I don't care. Because I want to paint one. And, it, and yeah, like I said, these are Chaos Space Marines. They've been in the warp. You know, they've been in warp space for tens of thousands of years. They're not exactly going to have a freaking California suntan. You know, or a Miami Beach suntan. And some of these guys are going to be, have patchy skin. They're going to have, you know, horns growing out this inside of their faces. Things of that nature. So they're not exactly going to be looking for a dermatologist, if you know what I mean. So we're going to flip it over like that. Now what I could do is on the sword, on the cross half of the sword, there's a skull. Now I could paint the skull in gold, or I could paint the skull in bone. And I'm going to paint the skull in bone, because I'm working on the bone now. I was going to do it in gold, but I thought no, 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 I'll do it in bone. And again, So that's that, so let's start doing that skull and the sword now. Again, I'm just going to drag it across the main area on the, on the area of the skull, the, 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 the cheekbones, the fore, forehead, the teeth, to establish lines. And now, Run it through the paint. So I'm going to run it through. Rotate I've also noticed some teeth on the shoulder pad I missed. So we'll swing by it back and get those. And again, we're just laying base colour down. We're not looking to do anything fancy. Okay. And we just got cramp in my finger. <sighs> that one's going to get on. Okay, so that skull going to be two pipes. So now I'm going to get to the teeth. 
it's on the shoulder pad that I missed. So again, we're just going to lay down a base color, and we're going to fix it. In fact, what I might do to save time on the video, just pick one miniature and paint him. And that way I can paint the rest off the camera. And I think it might be the sergeant that we're going to pick. Alright, so we've got the teeth started. On the shoulder pad. That's the case. I've got one more layer to do on this guy here and cross pummel. Cross guard, sorry, not cross pummel. Right, so I'm going to do this so you can see a rough idea of what I've been doing. Okay? So we've got the bone all picked out. You can see the teeth on the shoulder pad, teeth on the backpack. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do, now this is a color I didn't specifically pick out just yet, but I'm going to use some burnt umber. I'm going to lay down a cover, some coverage um, on, hmm, oh, no wonder, my pad is drying out because of the heat it is quite hot here in the UK today so give me a few seconds guys I want to rehydrate this pad I guess that's kind of why my um, So we're going to throw down some burnt umber, like so. And same brush that we use to paint the bone, okay, because it's okay to do this. So I'm gonna get the paint to a nice, smooth consistency. There we go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this brown all over his face. But before I do that, I'm going to unload the brush a little bit. Okay. Okay. And the reason why is because skin color tones when going over brown will become more richer. Okay. Plus it also breaks up the facial highlights for me. Which means I might be able to get some uh, better um, some more uh, better tutorials and stuff out for you guys because I know a lot of people have a hard time painting faces and skins and, whatnot and, that, so. and it doesn't hurt to practice and if you've got a 3d printer like me just 3d print off a whole bunch of heads put them on plinths and just practice painting you know try different um, undertone skins, try different um, zenithal highlights, try there's so many different things that you could try 
Like this guy's got horns growing out the side of his head. Okay. Do I want to do them as if they're irritating his skin? In which case I would add some purples, some pinks in with the skin tones. Or do I want to do it as if they're bursting through? In which case I want to add some blues and, and pale yellows and greens. There's tons of ways that you can do this guys, tons. My brush tip tip is hitting this. There we go, much. And again, this is going to be our. So I'm going to I'm going to grab these guys, move them off the close up can. And like I said, guys, practice. Okay, don't be afraid. Okay. I know I know someone who uses purple, lich purple and a few other colours as his underskin tone. And some of his elves look amazing. I know you're thinking purple with elves? Yeah. That's what I thought too. Till I actually started seeing some of his stuff come together. And it just blew me away. I was like totally just shocked. Not even gonna lie. I've been painting Games Workshop miniatures since I was 16. I'm 43 now, so. And you're gonna see. See, I could, you know, even make this guy African American or, Af or, or, or African of, of some sort of African heritage, you know, um, because that's what a lot of the Salamander Space Marines are. They have really dark, rich, black, almost burnt skin, um, because the um, Salamanders have a penchant. As the French say, for flame weapons and melter weapons, and all right. So now that I've got the outline somewhat there, I've noticed I've actually missed another thing. Could use a metallic work, work over there. And so, what I'm going to do is grab a different brush. Go to the metallics real quick. Gold, real quick. Touch up this chaos star and the sword. And rotate it. Again, we rotate the miniature, not the brush. Let's 
some of this water real quick. So I can go back to my brown now. Back of the head. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay. So here we have our the head. with the burnt umber skin tone over it. Let me just adjust the um, focus real quick. There we go. And so now you can see what I'm talking about. So that's that. Now we're going to work on the skin tone this guy now we've got two skin skin time paints I showed you before we've got Vallejo basic skin and Vallejo um, light flesh okay and what we're gonna do we're gonna take a drop of the skin tone We're going to glaze this, which means we're going to have to make this paint really, really watery. And I'm just going to trace it. Because there's still certain parts of the miniature I want to be dark right this second. on his face. So what I'm doing is just tracing it. And like I said, this is where we can choose to to make some mistakes, you know. This is where you can choose to, you know, make your mistakes and things like that and whatnot. Again, I've added a little bit more water to it, to the paint, sent to more of a consistent glaze. And what that means is once the water evaporates, is the skin tone color in question is going to be more prominent.
And a lot of people, like I said, they're really intimidated when it comes to painting faces. Um, I was at first, I'm not going to lie, I was very intimidated at painting faces at first. I um, felt really intimidated, to be honest with you. To be completely honest with you, I was really, really, really intimidated. This is going to take a few layers because you can seriously see a lot of brush strokes and stuff. But again, that's the problem with glazes is it will take a while for the effect to actually come through. It doesn't come through overnight. So what I might do is actually pause it, the, the tape, tape, the recording. But you can see the idea of what I'm doing, so I'm going to show it to you real quick. So now you can see that his face is starting to get some colour in it. Again, this is just glazers. Okay, it's just glazers, guys. Just glazers. Okay. As you can see from the overhead, it's, I mean, I'm even grabbing extra water and thinning this stuff down. Okay. And then. So there's barely any paint whatsoever in my brush, in the bristles. In many retrospects, this could be a borderline um, dry brush. Because what I'm doing is I'm setting up the face for an actual skin wash. That makes sense, and you'll see what I'm talking about here in a few seconds. But I think, uh, no, not yet. Still got some work to do. But soon we will whack a rack of flesh wash on this guy, and you will see what I'm talking about. Excuse me. My throat is very, very dry. Oh, this is the longest clip so far I've done. It's almost an hour long. But glazing takes its time, guys. You have to take your time when it comes to glazing. Can't rush it. So here I'm pseudo stippling with the tip with the glaze so I'm going to have about an hour and a half just in this guy's head but then again guys like I said he's a special character he's the sergeant of the squad so these are the sort of miniatures that you will spend that sort of time on. If this was just a regular run-of-the-mill possessed space marine, I would just hit it with a simple layer of the pallid flesh like I just showed you, or pallid witch flesh even. Then whack it with a rack of flesh shade and then retouch with the base colour.
The best way to describe it is I'm going for like a Borg drone style um, circa first contact Borg drone style um, skin blotchiness, if that makes sense. If you ever watch Star Trek uh, Voyager or Star Trek uh, First Contact the film, um, where you see the Borg and the drones have a unique, weird, like, swirling pattern in their skin. I'm doing something similar to like that. Okay, so then what I'm going to do... Is then just... And that's another thing. You want to look at where the light's coming from. So his upper forehead's going to be brighter than underneath his nose. Um, and his chin, um, his jawline is going to be more sunken in. The back of his head is not going to be as bright. Um, and I haven't even started painting the horns yet. Like I said, guys, it will take a while. Okay. So. Now what you could do is you could use some contoured dragon contoured dragon of flesh or you could use um, I've got another flesh wash here, here it is um, or you could use Riken flesh shade and that's what I'm going to use I'm going to use Riken flesh shade okay oh good lord I'm throwing this chaos space marine around everywhere <laughs> so I'm going to give the paint a little shake now unlike other things I'm actually now switching over to some seriously fine uh, brush tips I mean look how fine these tips are they're tiny okay I'm gonna have those off the side off to the side but I'm gonna take this one brush I've been using okay again I'm gonna move the pot out of the way so I don't knock it over and now I'm just gonna apply it In the mouth, in the eyes. In between the horns. And by the sides of the head. To where his implants are. Because all Chaos Space Marines have implants. Some even elect to have extra implants installed. They will see people like Phoebus Bile um, and say, hey, yo, Bile, I want, you know, a redundant backup for this, that, and the other. You know, of course, Bile will be like, why do you want a redundant backup heart? You know, or, you know, because I already get a secondary heart for Space Marines, do anyway. So now what I'm doing is I'm actually watering down the flesh the shade even more, okay? And I'm just going to boot the snoop. And now I'm just blotching it in places that I think needs it. So like the sides of the head. And I haven't even tried um, putting down the other shades yet, so... If you're not happy of where the shade's at, don't be afraid to just take a brush, a dry, you know, like a pseudo wet brush, and just pull it away. Okay, and then just move it to where you want it. I'm just taking it in its raw form. Okay, not much, just a little dab.
Right, now I'm going to go right back to the raw skin tone now that I was using. I'm just going to touch up places like the eyebrows. Nose, chin, okay so now I've got to use my finer tips now, I'm at a point where the finer tips have to be used. So now I'm going to use the, um, is it the detailed or the fine, super detailed, precise detail. Sorry if I'm not talking like a chatty Cathy, I'm just, I'm really trying to concentrate, guys, I really am sorry about this. Once you get to the point where you're like me and you've put quite a few hours into certain miniatures and... to look a specific way you know. So now I'm going to put the lid on this shade, like so, so I definitely don't knock it over. And I'm actually going to go straight to a different shade, which is Noon Oil, or Noon Oil. It's a pure black shade. Again, we're actually going to go to the face with this. Places like the eyeballs, the mouth, chin, because we want this guy to have like a little pseudo tired look in his eyes. see what I'm talking about it's, I really wish I could ha get better lighting for you guys so you could see exactly what I'm talking about but unfortunately this is like the best I can do right this second no, that's not gonna work Sorry guys, I'm just trying to figure. Anyway, um, there you go. You can see 
brow definition, cheeks, back of the head. You can see lots and lots and lots of the focus would work. You can see lots of definition. And there we go, guys. So now I'm going to do the cleanup phase, and that involves me growing straight to Urbaden Air Black and me using one of my more precise brushes. So I'm actually going to go back to my Citadel layer brush. I'm actually going to put the pot in the um, wet palette, so if I do knock it over, spillage is kept to a minimum. And now I'm just going to go around the model, cleaning up any loose um, color. That I see so any gold trim that's not where it should be will get at least a layer and this is setting it up for the next stage of cleanup and you'll see what I'm talking about guys when I say the next stage uh, next stage is an overall wash with noon noon oil noon oil none oil whatever you pronounce it an overall oil wash here soon so there you go all I'm doing is picking out the areas where I know I can see that there might be a um, an issue with uh, trim color sticking out things of that nature and how to go about cleaning it up Like on the shoulder pad here, we've got some cleanup, some real big cleanup to do. And that's fine. This is what I was telling you about, guys, where I said this is where you're the time that you saved earlier by rushing doing the gold, you're gonna lose by having to do the cleanup. So it's 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 gives give and takes guys it's give and takes but by the time we're done we're gonna have a really beautiful uh, chaos space marine of the black legion all right so that's the trim behind him i can tell it a little bit down here Trim on the front shin pad to need a little clean up. Down here. Down here. I've painted entire um, chaos space, uh, entire armies like this. Some of them were for customers, some of them were for myself. I no longer take commissions, so don't don't bother asking. Got tired of people saying, oh, you know, wanting a hundred pounds of shit and only giving me a two pound bag and expecting me to shit miracles. You yeah. know, or they'd, they'd um, send me a, an army that someone else had already painted and asked me to try and match the other artist which you can do it's just it takes it's an ex at that point you are experimenting because you don't know their colored wheel you don't know their contrast lines you don't know um, what paint company they use did they use Citadel paints did they use P3 did they use uh, Duncan Rhodes you just don't know so now we're just cleaning up a bit of the power pack. And then I think we're going to be ready here soon for the first wash. Nope, got some teeth bits here to clean up a little bit. Just a one tooth. Right. And now we've got 
some teeth on the shoulder pad to do. I haven't eaten anything yet guys, so please forgive me, I do need to eat here soon. Okay, so we've got some loose silver. We've just got sorted. Alright. So I'm going to wait for that to dry. I just saw a little bit of gold trim out there. That was in the way. That's there. That's there. Again, guys, see, normally I would do the touch up after the wash. It's just I'm, I'm doing it this way to show you. Okay, so you saw how bad the gold trim was around the legs. Well, it's all trimmed. It's all prim and proper and clean now. You know? Alright, so that's that. Now we get the shade brush out. Again, always make sure that you've got your pots. Your paint sorted. I don't need the magnifying glass for this bit. Okay, so I'm going to put that there. I'm going to find my shade brush. Which is right here, Citadel shade brush. Okay. And then we're going to grab our noon oil. Give it a jiggle. Again, put it in there. Overload our brush. And the only place we don't touch with this shade is the face. Okay? So you can touch your, your Chaos Space Marine all over. Giggity. He won't mind. Even more so if he's Slanesh. Okay. just gonna paint over everything but the face so the only thing we don't touch with this this wash is the face okay guys no face everywhere else but the face unless you want to repaint the face because this will dull down the face um, real real bad so if you're not happy with how the face came turned out I, I guess you could uh, Again, just being a little bit careful with the shoulder pad near, near the face. Okay, I'm gonna like so. I'm gonna hit this shoulder pad. And again, if you overdo it and it pulls, okay, because the wash will pull. Okay, if you overdo it and the wash pulls, grab another brush you've got and just let that brush that brush soak up the the wash. Again, being really careful around the head. Okay, being really careful. Not to actually, you need, again, like I said, if you do, we can always go back and redo the head. It'll just take a little while longer. And that's something that I know you guys, you know, aren't really into or want to do or are all about. So all, all we've done is just the skin of the head. We haven't touched those horns yet, which we're going to. Okay. So look forward to seeing that part. So like I said, all I'm doing is just dab, 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 dab. Now the sword all over the blade. Okay. This side, that side. As well, the pummel, cross guard. Okay, and again, just pay attention to where it's pulling. Okay, if it pulls down at the feet too much, you may have to uh, uh, grab a uh, a brush and pull that up. You know, pull it out. It'll soak it up like a sponge. Okay. Some areas you may find it become too dark. That's fine. We can always touch those areas up. Alright. Now, as long as you haven't touched the face, 
it'll now look like this. <laughs> Big difference, right? And you're thinking, how can just one wash do that? You'd be amazed, guys, okay? You would literally be amazed at what a wash can do to a miniature. Okay, then we're gonna let this wash dry. The wash is gonna take about 45 minutes to dry. So I'm gonna end the video here. When we come back, the wash will be dry and we'll be doing the rest of the horns on his face. So uh, yeah, guys, until then, I'll see you in the next clip. <laughs> hey guys, uh, sorry about the background noise. The fan is on full because it is now officially 90 degrees Fahrenheit in my room. I am melting, <laughs> there's nothing I can do about it, so the fan has to come on. Well, I just wanted to show you a quick update of where we are at. Uh, the wash has dried. I'm gonna hopefully let this, there we go, hopefully let it focus. The wash is dried, miniature's looking amazing, and so we're gonna get back to it. And so what we're gonna do is, uh, I am gonna obviously move my phone out of the way. And uh, what I'm going to do now is take a quick visual inspection of the miniature and see what areas I want to, what area I want to want to tackle first. Now I could go to the, go back to the gold trim and um, edge highlight it. You know that basically means go back to the original color, take a really fine detail brush and just tap 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 certain areas. But we've got some bone on his forehead. That we need uh, uh, some of those those horns on his head that we've got to take a look at so that's what we're gonna do and how we're gonna do that again we're gonna grab our wet palette we are gonna take our sponges off and oh look our paints are still wet love it and so I'm gonna take this bone that is still wet oh, I love wet palettes even in 90 degree weather, my wet palette is doing its job. And we're just going to gently just touch the bone so we know where it is. So they genuinely look like fresh grown horns, if that makes sense. Like he's literally just starting to corrupt. Flop on the tip of this brush. And roll the brush real quick. Get it to a fairly decent point. And like I said, we're just going to touch these horns in the privacy of our own home. Alright. So now the horns on his head. Have a base, and now I'm just going to touch up very carefully. Now this is where you've got to be careful. I'm actually going to have to hydrate this brush a bit and hydrate the paint a wee bit. Gently go to where all the phone is. Remember, if you make a mistake and you touch something, it's okay, guys. We're still at the cleanup phase. We can grab some. We can grab some Abaddon Black and just fix the mistake. Okay. Again, I'm using my fingers to brace the brush. To hold the brush, to guide the strokes, and again, I'm moving the miniature, not the brush, as you can see. And we're not looking to get a hundred percent coverage, right? Now, these teeth on the shoulder pad are going to be a little bit sticky. is the uh, print for these shoulder pads didn't come out a hundred percent how I wanted them to so but I'm still going to use it because it's on the model 
I sure as heck am not going to dismantle the entire model just to replace the shoulder pad. Uh-uh, that, that would be insane. Right, so we've touched up the teeth a little bit. Again, two small thin coats. We're not looking to dump full coverage on each swipe. That is not what we're trying to do. Okay, so now we've got the, the sword. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it around real quick. And we can see where the, the um, wash is settled in along the bone ridges of the forehead. So we're just going to follow that and bring it out. Very gently. Just letting the brush do um, literally 99% of the work. Gentle, small strokes. Okay, we're not even going to try and full whack it out, if that makes sense. But just going to do quick, simple strokes. So we're going to be keeping the shadow, we're keeping our highlight, and we're just making the, the bright areas a wee bit brighter. And we're going to do the same on the opposite side of the sword. Again. Like so. Small. Small strokes. Okay. Let the paint flow and do its thing. And as I say, let the spice flow. We'll let the paint flow. So we're just going to let the paint flow and do its thing. Alright, so that's that. Now we're going to contact, we're going to look at the bone on his chest. And so again, we're going to follow the contour of the light, which means the, or what's known as edge highlighting now. So we're going to follow the contour of the eye, a little bit of the lower socket. And that's pretty much all we're going to follow. Okay, okay we're going to follow the forehead, that, like the eyebrow ridge area. On his chest. And we're just going to touch up. I think you've got too much paint on your brush. Don't be afraid to just touch your finger with it. You know. Okay, now we've got to think of the lighting. Our lighting is coming directly from above, so the top of the skull is also going to get a little bit bright. And so now I'm just going to jab my wet blend. A stipple on that blend. Okay. So. And then we've got that skull on his belt buckle. Again, we're just letting the brush and the tip of the brush do its work, that's what it's for. That is legit what the brush is for. Okay. And again, don't be afraid to swap brushes. Okay. If you think it, your brush that you're using is too big, stop and swap the brush. Okay. Case in point, I think this brush that I've got now is too big. So I'm going to swap it out for an even finer point.
stick on the first the top real quick and build up a texture and look of faded bone there we go lovely Okay, now I'm going to swap this out for a different brush that I normally use. Where are you? Here it is. And this one, I'm actually going to start touching up the um, the red. On the tabard, so I'm going to look at where the high spots are on the tabard and this is where if you really want to get interesting what I'm going to do again our base is Mephiston Red okay Good shake our base is Mephiston Red so I'm going to grab a little scoop of that put it on our pile okay with GW Paints you've got to make sure that you hit the back of the paint pot and what I mean by that is the paint pot back here otherwise it's going to leak and you'll get air gaps and you don't want that so when you close the lid make sure you push on the back too and of course his sword's just snapped so that's that's fine we can glue that we can glue that but what I'm going to what I am going to add is I'm going to get some um, ceramite white And I'm going to put a small drop just there. Not much, literally. It's not even not even technically a full drop. It's half a drop. Okay. I'm going to take a big dollop of the red and a little scoop of the white. And I'm going to mix up a little off red tinge. Almost a pink. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the side of the brush tip to just follow the heightened ridge line like the folds on the cloth and the bottom and what that's going to do is it's going to give the illusion of light again I'm going to turn the miniature It's also going to give the illusion of scratches. And if you think you've done too much, grab your Mephiston Red, pure Mephiston Red, and just Put it up alongside where you think the mistake is. And you just let it settle. And there you go. Now, I want to uh, clean up the gold. So we're going to go to this, it's still Retributor Armour, it's, it's in a dropper bottle and it makes it a lot easier for me to just put down just a little bit for what I need to do which for me is to just add a little bit of edge highlighting in certain spots so we're going to put some on our tip of our brush and then I'm going to find like the shoulder pad lines and I'm just going to run the, the side of the brush across the edge and it's going to give the illusion that the edge is sharp um, same as certain high spots 
on the trim where I know the sun would the light would hit it and so it's going to give the illusion that that's the light is hitting it you know and you're not technically adding a new color but it ends up becoming a new color again rotate the miniature because if you look at a copper penny or a pound coin or anything that's made of a very malleable material copper is malleable which means it does it does deflect heat quite well which is what it's used in computer cooling components but it takes scratches and dings very easily because it's very malleable and just like the bone ridges on on the skulls the skull on his on his leg on his kneecap we're going to get that the lower shin guard the leg that he's got forward would be more in the sun so we're going to take again angle of light nothing stopping us from making it look like his trim's about with one because that in essence is what we're doing and if you really want to take this a little step further we could grab another load of uh, wash and go for a second wash round but I am just doing this to define the shoulder pads for you for you guys Again, simple edge highlighting now if you want you can also highlight uh, any edges on the actual armor itself by mixing you know chaos of bad and black with a little bit of uh, 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 with a little bit of ceramite white and make like an off gray color you can highlight places like his elbow like right here well you can't see that because um, you can offset his elbow and various other places like that and the same leg get down further I'm actually touching up the trim again this is where all that time that you you used earlier to speed the process up you will either lose it or if you're happy where you're at miniature wise you'll make it up Okay. Now apart from the fact that his sword arm did break off, he is actually looking quite stunning. So we can always glue his sword arm back on, but he is looking quite, quite stunning. You can see the edge highlight in the gold now you can see the highlights in the the loincloth highlights in the skull bone on his chest um so yeah you can do that guys so what i'm going to do now real quick is find my there you go. i was going to say find my decent super glue my lock time complain that it's clogged because it is you son of a gun where did i put my is I literally have a drill bit just for unclogging my glues, my super glues. In fact, I think what I just perfect amount. So now we're going to take his sword on real quick. Put it back into position. I'm just going to hold it. Uh, normally, I would use like a, an advanced kicker, but I don't seem to have any offhand. So go. 
So his sword arm's back into position. He's ready to swing it towards enemies of the Chaos Warbands. Alright, nicely done. Good save. Now, I'm actually going to highlight the silver for a, a few. So what I'm going to do is a little dab of water, not much, just enough to rehydrate, but notice how I didn't. Again, you've got to be careful because this is what I'm talking about when I told you about sometimes it will uh, separate and look like glitter. So all I need to do is just grab a little bit and we're going to actually edge highlight the sword. So we're just going to follow the swords. Swords edge pattern. This is nothing fancy. Now, if I really wanted to make this into a fancy smancy power sword, which I probably might, um, you could always add like a blue glaze to it. And I don't mean like you see normally with um, imperial uh, power swords. There are tons of guides on how to paint power swords, guys. No one guide is the best. And with that being said, what I could also do is do some minor scratches on the blade. That way it looks like the blade was actually Used. You can even use a, an extra highlighted silver if you have it. Again, but we're going we're going with a simplistic guide. Okay, remember what I said to you guys. Guys, this is a simplistic guide on how to paint your miniatures and get them to a tabletop ready. So I'm just going to feather this up. There we go. Now this sword looks really sharp. And he's ready for decals if you have them. Oh, we missed. We missed his ammunition. And the gun. So. We'll just hit that real quick. Like so. And then we could just do another little minor highlight on the gun mechanism. I think we have to scratch in a few places. And look for where the volume of light would be, where it would reflect. Now, if you wanted to do a blue glaze for the power sword, let's take a look at what we've got. We've got several blues. Um, I've got McCrag blue, which is a standard GW color. I believe I actually have, do I have any green watches? I've got several green, I've even got a um, sky, you know what, yeah I'll take this sky blue. So we're going to take this sky blue from Vallejo, okay, what we're going to do, we're going to put a small little dollop, not much, there you go, literally just a little dollop, and then we're going to add a whole bunch of water to it. Oh, heck of a lot of water. So. so we're gonna have a bit of water there. In fact, I'm gonna. You don't know, that will work. Okay. And we're gonna do like a watery sky baby blue. Pretty much. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go to the base of the sword and scroll up.
and what it's going to do is the water is going to evaporate leaving the blue behind but subtly okay this is something if you notice I'm going to put this under the do you see what I'm saying how there's now a sky baby blue tinge to the sword okay some people would say that's a bit too much I would I would I would actually agree and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shit around a little bit so it's more at the base dries nicely and have like a powder blue tinge to it which is what we want and we want again we want it more to the bottom than at the top And there we go. There is. Now it's still wet. When it dries, it's going to dry a lot different. See? You can already see it's got. It's still the metallic silver, but it's still got a blue tinge to it. Okay? And then what we can do is go back over it with some more silver. on the edges And now we're just going to touch back up on the gold. That is the cross pummel in the center. Do it on both sides. And there you have it guys. Power sword. Still got a little blue tinge to it. You know now you can see. You see what I'm saying? In the right light you see the blue. You see the silver. It's like wait what is it? And that's how you do it guys. Okay. Don't need fancy smancy skills. 
But uh, yeah, our uh, Chaos Sergeant here is almost ready for the bat for the tabletop. We just got to tweak the paint a little bit, a few things, more things on the teeth. Um, tweak a little bit more things on the horns, on the head. Base him with some snow, like we have with this guy. See, we've put him on a, some snow on the base, and uh, and we hit him with some uh, clear coat, and uh, we're good to go. So, yeah, guys. So that's how I do my Black Legion. Um, if you want some more tips, some more videos like this, please let me know in the comment section down below on what you want to see painted next in a simple how-to, minimum, you know, three, four paint series. And uh, I will do my best to uh, knock it out for you. Oops, sorry. There we go. I'll do my best uh, to knock it out for you guys. Uh, because I do actually enjoy doing these sort of videos. Um, now I've got to spend an awful long time editing these videos because I know one of the clips I filmed was uh, an hour long. Um, so, yeah, I've got to just get that overhead light out of the way real quick. So, yeah, I know that one of the video clips uh, that I did was an hour long. And uh, so, like I said, guys, I've got a lot of work ahead of me, editing-wise and whatnot. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this video series. Um, like I said, if you want... I'll uh, even do a video on me basing the miniature and then hitting him with some clear coat. Uh, but I tend to do the clear coat stuff when I've got a minimum of 10 miniatures because it takes a lot to clean out the clear clear coat from my airbrush. But um, yeah guys, that's pretty much it. And you've seen it here today. This is how I paint my uh, Black Legion. Hey guys. Till then, I'll see you in the next one.